I'd say specifically for the podcasting industry, I feel like one, it's it's a, such a small industry. Like everybody knows everybody in some capacity or another. And so you have to be very careful because all it takes is, or at least to me, it feels like all it takes is that one mistake and now you're canceled or you spoke out about something and now you're looked at as the angry black woman. And because of the fact that it's bigger than me, I need to make sure I'm always in a position to where I can advocate for my community and people can want to work with us so that that way people in my community can get better opportunities. Um, Does that mean sometimes it seems like, oh, I don't feel strongly either way about something? Yes. But my personal views is something I share amongst friends. It's something I share within my paid community because of the fact that they've been on this journey with me. But to the general public, I just feel like it's not really worth it. Oftentimes, there are people who, I call them the crusaders of the industry. And it's okay for them because either there are allies and they're able to speak freely without retribution, or that's their personality and they've made it to a certain point that it doesn't impact them in that capacity. I'm only really three years into this. I'm still trying to navigate figure out like, okay, wait, what is acceptable? What's not? And and it changes from like month to month. And, you know, I think just to kind of back up a little bit, let's explain a little bit more, you know, what Black Pod, uh, Pod Collective is and, you know, what it is that you're trying to accomplish with that. So Black Pod Collective is a digital community for Black podcasters. Our main premise or our pillars are community visibility as well as support. And so um, support and education. The whole premise, though, is oftentimes as Black creatives, like we don't make it long in the industry if we're not famous or we didn't blow up immediately. And oftentimes what I see is that it's from a lack of knowledge. It's not from a lack of desire. It's they don't... we. We, because even I, we don't know how to get that access, how to um, grow our platforms. And so I really want to focus on being able to be that conduit, whether it's having brands be able to see us more, which in turn sees our community more, um, being able to showcase that there are amazing people out here, like with Black Pod Festival. I would say 90% of those Black creatives that we saw on stage teaching amazing things to the community have never spoken at a different podcast conference before. And the whole premise around that is you see the same, or I shouldn't call them token, but it's the same Black people who speak at every conference. Mm -hmm. And more people, they're always like, oh, well, then apply. Well, I don't want to apply to speak somewhere if I don't feel that I see myself in the audience. I don't feel represented in the people putting it together. And so that's the whole premise is being able to create space and safe spaces and stages for our community to showcase their talents, but also be able to glean from each other and say each other's names in rooms that some of us have access to that others don't. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned support, you know, when you were first mentioning this. And I, yeah, everything that you mentioned is kind of within that bubble. So, but then how do you how do you support people without, you know, giving too much of yourself? Like, you, I think about the analogy of, like, you know, you're helping pull people up. But if you get too tired, you end up falling down the hill. And so that does nobody good. Now you have nobody. You don't have the arms. You don't have the strength to pull anybody else up. You don't have the ability to be up above to get everybody there. So, yeah, how do you balance that so you're not you know, you're not doing this work as a detriment to yourself and to your company. I do not have an answer just yet because, you know, I literally just posted the fact that I would, after Black Pod Festival, I was ready to shut all of this down. Like, Black Pod Collective, it is not something that generates money for me. Like we literally, all the money from membership goes back into the community. So it is genuinely a labor of love. So imagine doing something for three years and not making money, spending money on it to keep it going and keep it up and running, but also supporting people. It is a drain. And as I have gotten more noticeable, I think is I'm doing air quotes because it's like I, I still think of myself as just trying to figure it out. But as I've no, gotten you're a star more, in the industry. <laughs> as I've I'm allowed more, to say that because you know it's, it's conceited <laughs> if you said it. So <laughs> as I've gotten more noticeable, apparently in the community, some people are upset about that. They feel like, you know, I have uplifted myself. What about them? Mm. And so it can be very taxing to feel like you're giving so much. And, you know, I, because I don't share often, you don't know the back end of the fact that we're not making money off of this. We are genuinely just trying to 
build and grow. Um, and so I'm still trying to figure out what that looks like because as I've launched a Dode Media and my life has changed drastically in those three years, I'm no longer in corporate. There's just so many different layers now that I'm still trying to figure out like, how am I able to still support this community without feeling like it's about to drain the life out of me? And so, you know, when you tell me, you, when you learn, you make sure you come back and get me. Don't leave me here, okay? <laughs> I know, I was just about to ask you how you juggle all these things. But yeah, clearly, yeah, it's just you just keep batting stuff in the air and you hope they don't fall. That's literally it. Well, and, and I think we talked about this privately recently, and I want to bring it here to this conversation that I think both of us ran into a similar situation in this last year where we had intentions of creating some new things. But the timing of it is like, okay, we're going to do this. And then right after this, we're going to, you know, make this company and then we're going to make this move forward. But the timing didn't line up where, you know, we, you know, plan these things out and then they mashed all together. So for me, it was, you know, creating a studio, but then also, you know, launching a new show, but then one new show became three new shows in a matter of a month. And it's like, I couldn't say no to any of them, but at the same time, they all went to launch around the same time. And next thing I know, I took on too much, too much work. And I know in talking with you around Adode Media and also with the podcast festival, you ran into something similar. Like, how do you manage your own time and resources with all the projects you want to do? And what happens? You know, how do you try to manage it once you realize maybe I took on too much? Um, that would 100% be the lofty idea I had of opening a studio while planning a major conference. Like, it just never crossed my mind that I should probably not do them at the same time. Like, it just literally never, like, the thought never happened until I was actively in it. And I had several nights where I was just like, give everybody their money back and just this conference is not happening. Like I had several of those moments because it was four o'clock in the morning. It was three o'clock in the morning. It was six o'clock in the morning. It was sleeping at the studio. It was a lot and it was very stressful. And, you know, they say as you, as you're learning, as you're doing, you can't just stop. So I'm already in it and I can't just be like, well, <laughs> this was too much. Um, but I can definitely say it taught me a lot in the moment of, you know, I'm one of those people who I will sacrifice sleep in a heartbeat to try to accomplish goals. And, you know, I am officially in my mid-30s. Like, this is not, <laughs> this is not it. Like, my body was like, oh, girl, this is not our 20s. Please stop it. Um, and so it's also recognizing and reshifting my mindset to say, okay, every idea I have is not an idea for today. Um, every goal I have is not a goal that even needs to be accomplished by myself. Like there's other people in the community and it's okay to allow them to either help or give it to them to do. Like, um, that's where I'm moving into where it's like, we are a expansive community. And originally I didn't know people now that I do, it's okay to like, I feel like God may use me as a vessel for the idea, but he may not mean for me to be the one to execute it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm moving into that season of every idea I have does not mean I need to do it. Um, and if nobody else wants to, it could be in five years, who knows? But it does not mean that every other day I should be launching something new because every year I've launched something. 2019 Black Pod Festival, 2020 Black, I mean, 20, 2019 Black Pod Collective, 2020 Black Pod Festival, 2021, Adobe Media and the studio. Like, baby, don't look at me for nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> 